Hello everyone, this is Kalyan from Amigos IAS. Today we are going to discuss about Women's Reservation Bill. So my first question to you, all of you is, is Women's Reservation Bill going to make a difference in the life of an ordinary woman? What do you think? Okay, make sure that you have a good amount of content before you answer that question. Because having a binary opinion, that means yes or no is very easy. Because UPSC frames questions in such a way that you fall into the trap of binaries. That is yes reservation bill is good no reservation bill is bad that is a binary trap please don't fall into such trap try to develop a holistic perspective because even the most thought discussed debated bills can have some issues or they have to be may even better okay so how what perspectives to develop let's dive deeply into this topic okay today's hindu editorial is about legislating the change okay what we call as nari shakti so we all have grown up hearing the term uh, women empowerment, women empowerment, right? So, is this bill going to make uh, a woman empowered? Is it enough? Is this one stop solution? We have to think all these thoughts, okay? Now, what are the advantages of this bill? The first thing is the bill is named Nari Shakti, right? There, there is a very important weight added to that Nari Shakti. It's a political sloganeering that is one way to think about it but at the same time it's also due recognition to the women who are actually contributing a lot to the society in main, many ways so nari shakti has to be brought out how and why because nari shakti leads to women-led development we need to move to a country where we stop talking about women empowerment and we have to move towards what women-led development it's high time that india is taking the right step in the right direction towards women empowerment i'm really grateful that at least a debate is happening in the country about women empowerment because we all know gender biases gender wage parity female labor force participation ratio issues harassment or problems about women we are all uh, used to these terms but now let's think about what will happen if there is more women empowerment luckily there is a term called as uh, top down approach and bottom up approach in india it's it's a variety scenario where we already have a very strong base that is the local self government is having good number of women at the base level whereas now we are trying to add more women to the uh, upper upper uh, regions that is state assemblies and parliament especially lok sabha as the bill says it is having a 15 years time period to discuss and debate about whether this should continue or not so the thing is bottom level we have a data where good number of women are there at the top level we have a data that some women have actually made a difference so let's let's see the good things there is enough proof that gender biases are mitigated in the society because women have been elected as sarpanches mlas and mps at the same time please remember there is a survey which clearly says women parliamentarians or women in political domain are more harassed in social media than any other group okay e even in india so where we worship women we also have a lot of problems related to women in social media even the parliamentarians are not exempted so there is a thought process one way we are saying that women will be empowered because of mps and mlas on the other hand i am telling you that women are harassed because they are women and women parliamentarians both are true so we have to be very clear in making that thought process next gender bias is definitely reduced that means men will give more due weightage to women uh, right next the positive spillover effects are long-term spillover effects that means if women are there in public sphere in law making more women will come into the public spaces they will discuss more about women issues there is enough data from rajasthan and other places to show that whenever women are elected as sarpanches uh, right from at the local self-government they have worked on the public goods more than any other group and they have discussed more about local women issues so the gender specificity to the law making policy making discussions will definitely increase and there is also data which shows a village which has elected a female sarpanch or have a female head as a village right had a more tendency to repeat the tendency that means more women will be again elected and elected in the village so it's it's a positive spillover effect that will happen if more women are selected okay next what is the negative side the negative side is this is an artificial gender parity move that means by bringing in the women's reservation bill we are artificially increasing their number 
qualitatively or quantitatively it's definitely quantitatively right so by forcefully adding as today hindu says if we have around 82 women mps if we pass this bill and implement it right so it will lead to around 182 or 181 minimum women mps in the parliament where are the next 100 going to come from that can be one question so artificial gender parity next presently what is happening is there is a token behavior as a as a representative women will be there in the parliament okay in different different parliamentary committees or in the political parties women are given seats for the sake of given uh, you know representation when the women are represented in a very minuscule number okay they actually won't have the power to change the political system as all of you know political systems in india are not only uh, dictated by caste they are also dictated by societal tendencies patriarchal mindset uh, traditions cultures how society treats the women there are multiple dimensions okay next when they are in small numbers it is more of a symbol symbolism and it won't make a difference and at the same time it is also having a syndrome called as bb betty and bahu syndrome that is women are treated as a daughter wife or a daughter in law they are just a representative of the male or the family hierarchy or the family system okay they are not actually treated as an independent member so this, remember this term bb betty and bahu okay this is a huge problem in the country so we have discussed what are the advantages and what are some of the common issues i am not even going into sarpanch pati and all these things which is proxy governance which all of us know right so the thing is how then is this nari shakti being implemented through this bill okay now let me tell two models one model is organic model the other model is uh, you know the fast track model right now india is trying to fast track by introducing the women's bill what happens in the women's bill on any given day when the bill passes after census delimitation and all these things 33 percent women will be represented in the parliament suddenly good number of people are in the discussion okay whereas other model is called as organic model what is this organic model that means uh, in scandinavian countries through education empowerment public discussions debates and all these things more women came into the parliament more women came into the lawmaking space it happened organically over a period of time in india even after 75 76 years okay thus that did not happen women are still represented very minuscule in even state assemblies and in parliaments all of us know the data so because it is not happening organically government has decided to take the fast track view so fast track way will also help in bypassing the caste syndrome patriarchy traditions societal morality that means society have a tendency to believe that women are not capable enough they won't have courage uh, or they are emotional like this society will have some perceptions all those glass ceilings will be broken in one day because of this uh, you know fast tracking so that is what government is trying to do Be by fast tracking what happens is what is societal morality will change overnight into constitutional morality that means the law will dictate that you need to have this number of women you have to give up all your so social glass ceilings and make sure that more women are joining the mainstream this is where the debate actually gets interesting so on one hand side there are good number of people who believe that it's tokenism symbolism on the other hand side there are people who believe that this will lead to some actual ground level changes i am uh, I, you know no, 50 50 like i'm in the junction where i believe that definitely few wonderful mps are going to come out of this move uh, but again at the same time this will also be misused but the beauty of democracy is we can always rectify our mistakes the beauty of democracy is you know we can make sure that we can learn the mistakes in the right direction by by learning the mistakes in the right direction more and more changes can be brought into the society having said all these things we should not never ever forget that reservations or reservation for women is more about you know a instrument it is a means it is a means to an end the end is nari shakti okay the end is women led development reservation is not an end itself just because i have given you reservation you are empowered that is a very futile argument we have to make sure that from starting to the end the entire life cycle of women is empowered in other ways also so so uh, in one way to put it 
रिजर्वेशन इज वन ऑफ द नेसेसरी कंडीशन बट नॉट द ओनली कंडीशन फॉर वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट लाइन इट्स वन ऑफ द कंडीशन बट नॉट द ओनली कंडीशन फॉर वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट सो रिजर्वेशन प्लस अदर स्टेप्स प्लस रिजर्वेशन सिस्टम इंप्लीमेंटेड इन लेटर एंड स्पिरिट एम्पावरिंग द रियल वुमेन नॉट नेपोटिज्म एंड ऑल दो थिंग्स बैकड बाई you know liberty in public spaces discussions dialogues and debates this will help the women so please remember the the system will try to move towards end or they will convert this entire debate women's reservation bill into an institution so we should make sure that reservations uh, towards the women will not become an end in itself or an institution in itself but it is actually going to be a critical mass what is critical mass theory critical mass theory just argues that when good number of uh, representation is done by a particular community which is considered as weak minority or whatever once they have adequate numbers it will starts you know having a positive spillover effects like the you know rolling mass right it gains momentum in the same way when more number of women actually come to the public discussion automatically more and more women related issues will be discovered and sorry discussed and that leads to more momentum so what right now the present government is trying to do should convert into critical mass so when good number of women come into the public discussion new issues will come out at the same time old issues will be solved combinedly it will lead to a better direction and that direction will lead to women led development because women will not only discover discuss about women issues right that is a very narrow thinking women will bring a huge amount of diversity at the same time they will also give more sensitivity towards the women related issues vulnerable and minorities and others right so in this way you can think of all the perspectives again i am not going to repeat the facts here i am asking you to think right the advantage is definitely there there are some disadvantages but as a democracy it's our mistake sorry it's our job to learn from our mistakes and make it better and better so i am i am in that positive hope that definitely this discussion and debates will empower an entire generation of young girls in the country they will also start believing that anything is possible by showcasing the positive examples of wonderful work done by female mps right uh, there can be a critical mass one day where women will have their own voice they will become a independent agency on their own not a representative of beti bahu or uh, you know bb and all those things that is nari shakti that kind of nari shakti has to be seen in the country so let's hope you will develop that critical thinking on more topics like this we will try to discuss more editorials if you have any questions whatsoever related to this topic you can always visit our ashoknagar institute uh, i will be here we will discuss more and more all the very best jai hind thank you